He allows that one to go through to the keeper. Does Herschel Gibbs and a bit of a stare from Mohamed Sami. That completes the eighth. 38 for no loss. Mustag, Mustag Ahmed into the attack. Nice and early. He's about to start the ninth over. Just the two seamers in this lineup for Pakistan today, which is an interesting selection. So a short leg in position and also a slip for Mushi. You can expect just a little bit of grip out of this deck. There it is. There is some turn straight away. Spinners. I think the different types of bowlers. Mushi bowls about 75 to 80 kilometers per hour. Big batsman Gibbs having a bit of a look today. 13 not, but Smith, he's on a roll, isn't he? Probably still thinking he's in England. He made 700 plus runs there. Cries of catch it and he's gone. So Mohamed Sami has struck. Graham Smith is uh, on his way. It was a short ball. And Kamal, the debutant, has taken the catch at a mid on region. So Pakistan strike. And Graham Smith, that's the big wicket. The skipper's on his way back. And I've got to say, he's on his way back in no hurry whatsoever. Just when we give him a wrap. This is what happens, it was short and wide, it's a ball that probably should have been dispatched through the covers. Got it high and it's an easy catch, the debutante there, Mohamed Sami. By G, this kid is fantastic. He gets the captain out and he's out for 33. South Africa lose their first wicket, 52 for one. Playing in his 94th test match. Just over, or just under, 6,600 uh, runs. A terrific average of 44. Best of 275 against England in Durban. And Graham Smith is the man that's departed. The man who's uh, scored so many runs against uh, England in the first few test matches. Then missed out a bit, but he's in the hut now. 33 he got. And Mohamed Sami just keeps trying all the time as the bloke who got rid of him. He's a patient player, Gary Kirsten. Do you know that's uh, one of his great strengths? Uh, just know his strike rate there, 42 runs per 100 balls can, compared to most players in the world around about 60 to 70 plus. They don't often say this and it's overused a bit, but this guy's a great player and has been for South Africa for a long time. Three slips a gully and a short leg who's fairly straight. Oh no, oh, no ball, Gary Kirsten uh, just digging that one into the ground eventually. And he might uh, pick up a boundary first up, he does. So Sami going for the big York, and I think Kirsten was in a bit of trouble initially and then got some bat on it. No ball that's fast, he's backing across and mm. oh, he, he was done by length, he didn't quite pick it up and he just got his hands on it. And didn't it fly away down through to the third man? Oh, he was in trouble. Pace. Very good delivery to bowl first up. Very quick. Just under 153 k's per hour. So he's on a roll now, Mohamed Sami. He's got to keep bowling quick, Dino. You were talking about the two uh, the two seamers and uh, three spinners. They don't want these guys to be stock bowlers. Mohamed Sami is doing an outstanding job. Picked up an important wicket. 57 for one now, off 12 overs, and the wicket that went. After a layoff of almost a month, struggled with a knee injury. But he has recovered, he's back in the side. No ball. No ball cool. Oh. 78 for one. Excellent stroke. Beautifully played just reaching for that one and in the end controlling the stroke beautifully it was kind of a check stroke it wasn't a great worry about that stroke but executed it beautifully Herschel Gibbs now we use the expression timing an awful lot don't we and uh, sort of word that is said through a good shot being played but the one part of Herschel's game it is how sweetly he times the ball as you say it there was no real effort to hit that hard Just let his hands go through it let the bat do the rest oh, gone straight to slip and he's given it 
so Dennis strikes well, that was a great catch from Kofi Kumar taking the edge of the bat and then flipping the pad of the wicketkeeper or the glove never easy but he took it nicely in the end big wicket for the Pakistanis and also for the leg spinner on that occasion pitching the ball within the stumps getting enough turn to take the edge and Herschel Gibbs just opening the face of the bat and that's where he was uh, wrong he's walking back after contributing 27 and South Africa 84 for 2 this could be a crease 70 test matches this is 70th over four and a half thousand runs at an average of just under 50 he was averaging 50 beginning of the tour to England and it's just dropped below that yeah that's Amir Sahel was saying how Herschel Gibbs just slightly opened the face of the bat which uh, made the edge a little bit thinner and he kept the bat square it might have been a thicker edge and gone down perhaps or wide of slip there you can see the bat angled away just bubbled a little bit but uh, caught it well enough in the end I think you'll find there's a little bubble here yep whoopsie the thumbs passed over the top stopped it coming out altogether South Africa with a little bit of work to do now here's Mushtaq one more to Kirsty reading the bowler from his hand from his palm coming down the track this is a great shot this is absolutely brilliant batting by Gary Kirsten he is at home against 92 for two that's a bit of a, uh, a freebie that one so Callis won't miss out he puts that away for four I think he'd made up his mind to sweep and it turned out to be a really a real lollipop plenty of uh, men on the offside so all he had to do was to connect it on the onside got a four easy shot easy ball easy four he's got this interesting little shuffle going on at the moment Callus. a couple of movements uh, as the ball is delivered a couple of trigger movements to the spinners shuffles across and he's gone for that sweep again I must admit Ramirez and I agree with him gain in confidence Is the paddle just around the corner they'll be looking for two it might even go away all the way for four very very good shot and Kirsten's away here well that's where uh, Gary Kirsten is so good taking the bat away from the off stump in order to place that ball very fine and away from the field swing, which has been placed very square on the onside just a simple dab and picking up a boundary that was his sixth well, he's just sweating on him to bowl anything outside leg stump and he'll get the front foot down the pitch umpire this quality should have given that out there were three noises first inside edge and then the back hitting uh, the toe oh. Danish Canaria has been very unlucky throughout this morning he could have picked up three wickets and once again a hairy fairy stroke from uh, Jacques Callas wrong on once again not turning miles oh the wicket keeper now well it's a hard one he had his hands closed almost before the ball got through well they've had the chances the Pakistanis oh, oh and there's the wrong one beautifully bowled into the over unlucky 141 for two could be yeah, yeah. Can't. well he should have taken this last one here keepers at this level just have a look how quickly he snatched his hands there they were shut before the ball even come through and went over the top of first slip and they got away well they've had some luck chance their arm a little bit that the South Africans well it's very important for the wicket keepers to stay low to the last moment oh. and get up with the bounce and if you see the replay once again 
have a look the ball is not even pissed and Mohan Khan is standing and that's where he was wrong and at the last moment shutting the gloves very early he just snatched at her didn't he Jack Callis to me just looks a little bit loose himself very still here's the catch here outside edge he's missed to hit the gloves and rolled up the arm and went over the top the first slip I've seen that go straight to first slip a lot of times unfortunate for the young kid here's a chance another catch drops well can you believe it it's your own fault Pakistan if you want to win matches you've got to take your catches well Yasser Mead was asked to stand in the slips Tofiq Omar was uh, fielding so well in the slips have a look it was a regulation catch in the slips and it's been put down how can you let off a player like Gary Easton you should be looking to take to take chances and here was an easy one oh and this is going to hurt the Pakistanis in a big way Yes, who's going off? I wonder if I hope it hasn't split a finger or busted. I know some pride has been hurt. Went off the ground here. And I hope he hasn't done any damage here because they'll need him to make some runs. He's bowled very good. Choi Malik. Big turn, a bounce. Straight to him. Good catches at first slip. Do not drop those. Hands on heads. Look at through the head in disgust. Both the bowler and the batsman. The end of the over, a good one two, 142 for two. Well, that was a simple catch. Now you've got to anticipate every ball coming towards you in a slip. Or two at times, just looked a bit scratchy. And there's the, they've got some thinking to do at lunchtime by G. Canary, I thought, bowled brilliantly for me. Bowled very well, and so did Sammy. So 37 overs in that first session, so they have to be pretty pleased with that. 145 for two. Smith played very well for 33 before he got out. Caught mid on off the bowling with Mohamed Sami. And gives 27 off 60 balls. A bit more patient than uh, he normally plays. Gary Kirsten not out 46. Seven fours in that 46. And he's been joined by Jacques Callis as well, who's not out on 27. Now, if you look at the Pakistan bowling figures, a bit of a surprise right at the top. The vice-captain, Shah Bhakta, just four overs. None for 28. Mohamed Sami did a very good job, seven overs and picked up uh, Smith as I said and uh, Danish Canaria also bowled superbly, 11 overs, one for 35 and also Mushtag in the action uh, quite a bit so the leg spin is doing some work in that first session. Okay we'll take a break, when we come back we'll pick up the action. Well we know that this team is short in experience. There's uh, no great fielder in this lineup really to lead them on. Yasser Hamid uh, was in the slips earlier, dropped straight forward catch. Now being put at 45. Well, that's three different first slippers they've had. Quite strange. That's where he went off the ground earlier, dropped one in. I oh, might have split just the back of his webbing on the back of his hand there. Well, oh, I had split his webbing for sure. No doubt about that. Major players missing from this lineup in Zamamulak not. Nice well beat Shweb. Very good shot. Ranesh Kaneria over pitching and Kirsten has played really a top quality cover drive. And that's his 50, brilliantly played. Of just 81 deliveries, eight fours. This is 32nd 50 in his 94th test. Fifth 50 against Pakistan. And he has 18 other 50s against Pakistan. Pakistan. Boy, gee, he loves playing against you, Ramiz. 149 for two. Only two players are playing today that, did, that played in the last test match one month ago, which I find just unbelievable. One fifty one for two. Ah! Edge, is there an edge and given by the umpire this time? Brilliant delivery from Danish Canaria. He had him going 
Jack Callis was feeling for the ball. It spun just enough to get that outside edge, and it's, this is an important breakthrough. Oh, he's a good bowler, this kid. I don't know whether he got an edge on it. Let's have a look. It's gone forward, spinning. Well, I think he's jammed the pad. I think he might have got a tough decision there, but he, well, he was out early in the day, and Neil Mallon has given it out, pointed at him, and bang, he's got his second wicket. And an important one too for the Pakistani. Jacques Callis has gone for 29, a shake of the head in South Africa. A 154 for three. What a dip and up. Man of the series in the one day tournament. 23 matches, average of 29.1, not great. Strike rate also in the 40s. And he's got his work cut out. The South Africans have lost Jacques Callis. And uh, got him out when it appeared that he hadn't nicked the ball. A strong appeal from Canaria earlier in the day was uh, out, not given. This time not out and given. Pressure being exerted out there. Two slips, Salim it off. Covers, shot cover. There's two men on the onside. There'll be a lot of oohs and ahs. Canaria has bowled magnificently. Well, the reason why he's here, let's have a look here. Oh, did he get a hit? Jacques Callis going forward. He looks like he jammed his pad to me. Yeah, he certainly did for me. I don't think that was a great decision. No one can't get his first catch. He can catch him finally. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a run given. Now the pressure was there for the newcomer. And uh, Canaria would be disappointed. He's got him uh, off strike now. Let's uh, see what the snicker meter says. Nothing. He's jammed his pad. I'm just trying to watch the difference in rotation of the ball there. I think he's just, there's the snicker and he's nowhere near the ball yet. So that's me, he's jammed his pad. So I'd be disappointed with that. Still was it to pick that wrong one as well. He's a, he's a fighter. They're all talking in Urdu around him. Bat pads and leg slip. About to start his uh, fourth over after the lunch break. And uh, he bowled a four over spell initially. He's around the wicket now, which he loves doing to left handers. Oh, goodness me, that is a nasty one. Wow, that is hit him. That is uh, very, very nasty indeed. Shob does down there very quickly. Mohan Khan is there as well. They're asking for the change room, and that is not great. That is horrible for Gary Kirsten. Goodness me, that was uh, around the wicket, and that uh, was a ferocious delivery. It was very, very quick indeed. And that is sad news, very sad news for Gary Kirsten. Let's hope it's okay, Amir. Oh, it is. Uh, and this is not the first time we have seen that. Gary Kirsten getting into the trouble once the fast bowler decided to come around the wicket and test him with the short pitch deliveries. It's a different angle and if you see Gary Kirsten's footwork, he shuffles in the crease too much. And that's an okay technique if you're looking to face the fast bowler over the wicket, not around the wicket and that was nasty. And uh, hopefully for Gary Kirsten and South Africa's sake, this is not very serious. He recovers quickly from that blow. I think he's going to be off the park for some time. They're lucky it, uh, it hit the grill onto the, uh, onto the face by the looks of things, but thank goodness there was some grill there. Now the boys before us were talking about how uh, he shouldn't be looking to play that shot against Shabakta. He is bowling very, very briskly, and that delivery was uh, another quick one. Oh, some serious bleeding. Well, at least him there, he's up and walking, that's the, that's the good part of this, that's the good news. His brother Peter copped a nasty one also from uh, Glenn McGrath. They had the whacker a few years ago, so uh, a couple of scars here for the Kirstens, but uh, gee, this uh, doesn't look great, and he is such a key player. Shobakta loves bowling around the wicket to left hand, as he loves bowling full or short. So, there we go, Shobakta is just uh, showing Daryl here exactly what happened. Neil McKenzie it is, who's now going to come out and uh, face the music. Neil McKenzie in the side today. Jacques Rudolph is a man that uh, has been omitted. Let's all keep our fingers crossed for Gary Kirsten that he's uh, okay. Good to see him on his feet. 
and he's got uh, a few laceration, lacerations uh, all over his face, nose and also the cheekbone, but we'll keep you up to speed with that. I know there'll be people in South Africa who will be very concerned about Gary. Anyway, here it is, Shabato now to Neil McKenzie first up. Oh, it's a great delivery, big shout, is that out? Yes, it is! Shabato has picked up a wicket here. Neil McKenzie has gone first ball and Pakistan are back in this test match. Great balling from Shea Bakhtar, but not so great batting from Neil McKenzie. He should have known that he'll be tested with the Yorker. And when you're looking to play in-swinging Yorker, you have to stay inside the line of the delivery. Your foot should be roundabout on middle and leg stump. But have a look. He shuffled across too much and was looking to cover the line, but the ball dipped at the last moment and he's been trapped leg before wicket and a good decision from the umpire Daryl Hare and Shweb after his jubilant but not this man in the picture he's walking back after facing only one delivery South Africa 159 for 4 well things have changed dramatically here at uh, Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore Gary Kirsten retired hurt for 53 Neil McKenzie gone first ball LBW to Shweb after so it's Mark Boucher the vice captain who is now out in the middle, playing his 66 game, an average of uh, just over 31, strike rate of just over 51. He can play this man, he's got a high score of 125, he's a gutsy cricketer, he's going to have to be with Sharp screaming in. He's bowling very quickly. And that's gone over the top of the slips, no one went for it, but between the gap, between second slip and about three and a half, and it's gone for four. Beaten for pace again, Mark Boucher, that one, another quick delivery. Well, that was a great delivery once again. Mark Boucher was anticipating a Yorker. And he was surprised with that length. Only just offering the bat to the ball. Not trying to play that down. And there was a lot of gap between second and the third slip. Very lucky. Could have been an easy catch if there was conventional third slip. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to understand as to why third slip was so wide for starters. So Boucher's off the mark. Action galore since the lunch break. Shah Bakhtar is bowling very, very quickly indeed. The ball that got Neil McKenzie was 155.3 k's per hour. Four slips now and a short leg to Mark Boucher. Oh goodness me, that's a wild one. That's disappeared thankfully for Mark Boucher's sake. Wide of him. There's an apology from Shah Bakhtar. It is all happening here. Well, he's bowling his fourth over Shwe Bakhtar. And he's been steaming in. And you require a lot of energy to generate such pace. And Shwe Bakhtar talking to the umpire that he's been sweating and that is the reason why the ball slipped out of the hand. Well, we have seen this happening second time. The first time that was at Faisalabad when Shwe Bakhtar was bowling at Jack Callis bowled a high full toss and hit him on the thigh pad and the next delivery he got Jack Callis similar kind of a thing here at Lahore Test match well is there going to be a wicket for Shwe Bakhtar on the next delivery so what are you saying look out for that Yorker who'd want to be Mark Boucher at the moment balls flying all over the place here four slips short leg and the attempted Yorker, well dug out by Boucher. Now, I think that uh, LBW to Neil McKenzie is worth a second look. I think uh, what we've got to look for, of course, uh, was Gary Kirsten retired, hurt the previous one. Well, we've got to look for this. Did it hit him outside the line? He did play a shot. It is full. Has it hit him outside the line? I'm going for outside the line. Amir, what are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, the toe is just outside the off stump. And if you see the ball is dipping at this point, and it'll be interesting to see what was the point of intact. Have a look. You can clearly see the off stump. And I think that was out. It was a fair decision from the umpire. See, you can see the off stump quite clearly. And wasn't the case the ball hitting the pad outside the off stump. Not a bad ball to get first up. Umpire's been busy today. Two balls left in this over. Boucher's oh. got that away. That's a good shot. Just the single though, Mark Boucher I think will be quite happy just to uh, take, take a couple of deep breaths and sit down the other end. Well this over has been action packed. Sending uh, Gary Kirsten who was playing so well 
back to the pavilion retired hurt then picking up a wicket and that delivery and have a look at the reaction of Shwe Bakhtar he was disappointed he was suggesting to the captain why the third slip was placed so away from the second slip 10 off the over one retired hurt and also a wicket we still got one more to go put to Dipanar on strike facing the chin music and well played rode that beautifully so that was an explosive over from Shobakta 45 overs gone 169 for four that's a good shot slightly short slightly wide and put away for four from Boucher well that's where the Pakistani bowlers they got to be very careful Mark Boucher has come uh, to this situation so many times in his career and one thing we all know that Mark Boucher is not going to hang about he's going to take the attack back to the bowlers and that was the opportunity provided to him short delivery and he played it beautifully second boundary for him and again it's well outside the line another not out from Neil Malander end of the over another big one 173 for four It's a good shot, nice and solid from Boucher, but a uh, good line of length again from Mohamed Sami. He's uh, a real talent, this man. I've enjoyed watching his development over the last couple of years. There it is, Pack SA at TajTV.com. We're waiting. Well, he's uh, keenly waiting that uh, few people will uh, come for his support. Well, it's highly unlikely, I'm telling you. But people, they'll be convinced that Neil McKenzie was out overstepping again well played by Mark Boucher in the outcome of this test match South Africans looking for a big total in the first innings that's a very good shot indeed it's gone past the man in the gully so that's uh, well controlled by Mark Boucher that's his third bound he moves to 17 now Intent was there to play the ball towards third man. A bit of room outside the option. I'm using the pace, not looking uh, to squick at the ball, just nudging it past the gully area. Third boundary for Mark Boucher. Such a utility player Mark Boucher is in the middle of the innings. Full toss. And that's away again. That's another boundary, so a couple of bonus balls there for Mark Boucher. Of course, there was a no ball or two earlier, and they have been punished, these extra deliveries. Not a great over so far from uh, the pace man, Mohammed Sami. Not finding the rhythm. Not pitching the ball in the right areas. Offered a full toss to Mark Boucher, and he picked up his second boundary of the over. So 12 runs off this over so far. Shobakta has been explosive in the last half out. Mohamed Sami trying to replace him and uh, not quite doing the business for Pakistan. That's well bowled. That's a very good delivery and a good follow through as well from uh, Mohamed Sami. End of the over. Eventually 51 gone. 189 for four. Playing it today. Puts pressure on Yusuf Yuhana. Good batting. Easier to, well there's just one ball to go so you can think about it between overs, easier to sweep the ball in front of square from outside the off stump. Oh, it was for me, Jack, I don't know about yourself. <laughs> two, 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 for four. First ball, he gets it in the right place. And an outside edge. Just evades first slip. But we were talking about whether he was a little bit too fine. Well, it would have been down his throat if he stood in the right spot. 
beautifully bowled by Mill. She got the outside edge, and well, obviously it's okay. We, we haven't we've played a fair bit of cricket, but I don't think Young Imran has. Look how fine he is there, and again getting bounces to stride and play outside his pad a little bit. Is there, and again getting bounces to stride and play outside his pad a little bit. Send it round the corner, he's gone. And Dipana, very, very disappointed with that. Threw his head back when umpire Hare gave him out. Is it out of disappointment because of getting out or otherwise? My first thought, it's come off his pad to me. It's gone forward. And that, to me, I think, come off his pad, the way it come off so slowly and the way it died towards the slip. If he got a good piece of bat on it, it would have gone a bit quicker to me. Well, everything's happening here at Gaddafi Stadium. But the Dibbana played very well for his 24. And South Africa now in a tough position, 2-2-9 two, two, for 5. Swept away. And that'll go for four. And a finish to a really incredible session. A slightly shortened session because of the extended first session. And South Africa finish on 235 for five. There it is, Kirsten retired hurt for 53. We don't know the extent of it yet. And we will keep you updated, obviously. Carlos caught calm bowled Dennis for 29. It didn't actually nick it, but he had nicked one. Here it is. This is 50. He'll get more than one, two, you think. And coming back for two. They might even get three if they run hard. And it's gone for four. So well done. Four runs to Boucher. He's 16, 50, 50 in just 66 tests. And he's 50, 50 against Pakistan also has three test hundreds very important 50 in this innings for South Africa Mark Boucher has played he came uh, at a position where uh, South Africans they were really struggling he saw Gary Kirsten hit on the on the grill and got quite a few cuts on the face and then Neil McKenzie getting out on the first ball but he has done well kept his cool he was very calm and now he has scored 50 end of the over South Africa 249 for 5 and it might be 4 and it will be nice little work open the blade up almost one day style for another boundary well at this position and the way Sean Pollock is batting He's not going to look and hit the ball through covers or drive the ball straight down the ground. And uh, for the Pakistani captain, it'll be a good thing if he uh, places a third man at this situation. He can take off the cover fieldsman and send it to third man. But uh, he's taken the option of uh, removing the second slip, pushing the fieldsman right at the third man boundary and that's Mushtaq Ahmed. Brought up the 250 that boundary. Oh, we still got three catches in there. A gully, a slip. That pad. Yeah, lack of concentration there. Start 144.3 kilometers. Oh, he's picked the wrong one there and he's picked it another one for four. Very good batting, Mark Boucher. Watching the ball closely and another boundary. He's eighth. Well, that's all about doing your homework. And they have uh, worked out Mush's bowling. Every time he has bowled outside the off stump, what the South African batsmen they have done, instead of looking to hit the ball through covers, they have uh, managed to hit the ball through mid-wicket area for plenty of boundaries. And that's a great strategy as far as the South African team is concerned. Oh. 
Chance for a run out, the bowler's head. Oh, they're backing up, that's okay. Quick single, good response for Boucher. And Canaria is not travelling too well. I think he, I think either he's suffering a little bit for cramps or he's got a little bit of a strain. 270 for five. Oh, brilliantly taken. That's taken, I think, uh, is looked to walk. Yes, given by the umpire. Now, this is brilliant catching. I think it's Imran Farad who's picked up a neat catch. Shrek Malik got uh, that one to turn rather viciously and Mark Boucher couldn't do anything about it. Couldn't keep it down. The idea was right to play it with the spin. Couldn't handle the spin. He's not scared to tuck it around in the corner, Mark Boucher, and uh, this time he tries it. At, uh, it's a really outstanding catch from Imran Farad. So uh, another wicket to Pakistan. Shob Malik is understandably elated. And now Pakistan are into the tail as Mark Boucher goes for 72. South Africa 282 for six. Well played, Mark Boucher. Shake of the head from him. But drinks it is now. So Paul Adams it is, who uh, did a pretty good job in the UK. Just sticking around and just uh, for defence. Hey, he's got a bit of uh, extra facial hair too, but lots of things. Paul Adams, a little, little bit of a moustache. That's the end of the over, 73 overs gone, 282 for six. Back live now, Sean Pollock on strike to Mohamed Sami. That's nicely played, gee that's good timing, that's running away very quickly indeed, it's going to be four runs, that's a wonderful stroke. Timing was sublime here. That's well played, that's a very good shot from Paul Adams, just pushing it uh, past mid off. Danish Canaria. Here's the chaser, and Paul Adams comes back for three, so that's good work. End of the over as well, he retains the strike, 292 for six. There's that rhythm, look at it, it's terrific. And it's a good ball to finish, and he's unlucky here, Mohamed Sami. Paul Adams has got enough bat on that, it's going to run away for four. So that'll frustrate Mohamed Sami. He might have just muttered something then. Can't say I blame him. End of the over, 299 for six. Oh. Oh. He's, he's bowled him out. I thought there was an appeal initially for an LBW or something. But that's a big wicket for Pakistan. Pollock, really the last bastion of defence in terms of batting, pure batting ability. But he's gone. Well... He's made his mind up before the ball's bowled. He's had a big lash at this. I want to take a bit of the pad too, and it's just nipped the off stump there. And Sean Malik, he still doesn't know. Oh, I do now. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> oh, thanks very much, Mullen. So the, the dangerous Sean Pollock's out, 28. Will um, uh, Kirsten bat again? South Africa, 302 for seven. Andre Nell, test match career barely worth reading up. And he just started, mind you, but he's no uh, great shakes with the bat. The significance of this wicket, because Paul Adams can hang around. The significance of this wicket is huge because with Kirsten's left eye still shut, there is no, I wouldn't think, chance of him coming out tonight. And that gives that wicket gives Pakistan a huge opportunity to wrap this innings up. Two more wickets they need if Kirsten isn't able to bat. And they've got 12 overs to do it in, or 11. Provided, of course, that the light lasts, that the main lights are coming on now. There'll be lots of oohs and ahs the one that goes the other way he can't pick it all smiles around have a look at this this is the way that he releases it looks like it's going to go in towards the leg and goes now why didn't that hit the stumps what a magnificent delivery a big stride well he's missed that by oh three or four inches Just give off the wrong body language. Oh, 
straight in the block hole and out LBW he does find that area so well and so accurately tremendous bowling well what a delivery and here it is here Neil Mellon to the umpire well there would have hit leg stump there hit back toe and hopefully it mightn't have broken the toe along the way there it is the dreaded finger let's have a look at here where it hits him on the foot I've got no problem with going on oh off the off the toe and that's out so let me tell you would have hit middle and leg for sure and he waited for the umpire to give him out and he's out for a duck now South Africa 307 for eight Kayantini average is just under 10 221 runs in test match cricket he can hold a bat to a degree been known to frustrate the odd fielding side for a little while but how accurate is that bang in it goes let's bowl that Yorker so well I think he's got that away on the onside he's looking for two they're going to get him very quick between the wickets for Carantini in the end of the 80th over 309 for him Paul Adams has walked all the way down to try and have a word with him still reflecting on the stroke well Robin is it block slog block slog there's a is numbers game good? is it all right okay let's see how we go here Here's the big strop. Look, there it is. He knew it was six. <laughs> big shout. Is that the straight one? <laughs> Worth the shout. This one that goes the other way. Pitches. There, it's hitting point. Or oh, the height might be the problem there. Daryl Hare said not out. There's another slog in here somewhere, Robin. <laughs> He's probably saying, well, either this will disappear to the boundary, or I'll block it because I don't want to face the next over. That's a big shout for the bat pad, and that is the ninth look at the full. Paul Adams is coming with him, so that answers any question of whether Gary Kirsten who would have been able to bat today the answer is no the Pakistanis are waiting to see there's a big fat inside edge and it just lobs up to the debutant Kamal at the forward short leg they waited for a moment just looking towards the dressing room so the innings closes Chad Malik takes four wickets and Teeny out for eight and South Africa having been 145 for two at lunch are all out for 320 with still six overs of this match to be played today so that's the end of day one South Africa 320 for nine all out basically 320 of course uh, Gary Kirsten retired hurt on 53 after that nasty blow he won't be coming back to bat so uh, that's it for South Africa in 83 overs and I think South Africa just ahead at this stage we've got to talk about uh, Mark Boucher terrific with his 72 off 96 deliveries he held things together right at the end and if you look at Pakistan's bowling figures well the pick of them was uh, Shoaib Malik 17 overs 4 maidens 4 for 42 and Shoaib Akhtar is explosive as he was again today just after lunch uh, obviously knocking Gary Kirsten to hospital and uh, picking up two wickets as well, two for 62, and then two also for Danish Canaria, and also Mohamed Sami, who did a very good job. Paul Adams now uh, chasing. Just the one. And I finally, I actually agreed, finally they might have got a couple of decisions right in, in, in regards to, I, I don't think that falls below the standards that the players look at this le level. Now, this is a wonderful game cricket, it's a noble game, it builds character, and and I, I just feel that the players are just getting a bit 
carried away. The South Africans should never have laid a charge, which happens, and if Clive Lloyd has to hear it, and if the charge is laid in under 2.9, he has to give that sentence. So don't blame Clive Lloyd on this incident. It's the South Africans have charged. That's a good shot. That's very well played. Well in front of square. Was short and wide from McCain. Turned in dispatch for a boundary to round off the over. Ten overs gone. 24 for no loss. That's away. That's a good shot. It's going to go for four. Just the standard fine leg. Not two men back. So that's another boundary. Good shot. Turns, sort of ducked at the same time, but got enough bat on it, it's gone away. Watch him just duck a little bit. And, but he turned and pivoted, and look the way he's facing. That's where he wants the ball to go. Hit of a smile. Good shot, that is well played. Didn't try and have it too hard, slightly over touch from McCain, Cheney, almost. Really good shot, real good shot there from from Imran. It's, it's his third boundary and belts the ball down the ground there. Look how straight his back was. Look at that, the elbow's so high. I think he enjoys Natini bowling around the wicket the way he sets his stance up. Thanks, Mike. Paul Adams is going to be uh, a, a really important part of the South African side. The seamers can maybe run up and contain the Pakistani batsman. But it's going to be down to Adams to get them out, I think. He's getting a lot of turn. There was a bit of moisture in the pitch available for them. Nicely played on that occasion. Not missing out. Second full toss. And it's been dealt properly by Tofi Kumar, who has played well. Nice juicy full toss, wasn't it? Adams has a habit of bowling at least one of these and over. Which is uh, probably one too many in test cricket. That one put away. One more. Half folly this time. Well, we're going to see plenty of those if Paul Adams doesn't get disciplined. He was very lucky to get away in the first two overs when he offered a bit of whiff and the length was quite full. Imran Farad was facing him in the first over, missed out on the opportunities twice in the over, but on that occasion, hitting his fourth boundary, he's unbeaten on 19. He's done the hard work. It's very important for these two batsmen to carry on. Don't leave it to the other batsmen. I want to see him bowl at a right hand. That's well bowled. Let's run away for four. Quite grumpy about that because uh, it was a fine delivery. 63 for no wicket. Well, uh, considering that uh, when the fast bowlers they are operating, they've got to have one or two slips in place and then they create a lot of vacant areas. Nicely played, beautiful stroke. Played that with some authority, Tafi Kumar. But not quite timing the ball to take the ball out of the boundary line. Only picking up two runs. Nicely played. High hands, good balance. Time for these South African seamers to uh, stand up and be counted here. It's going to be hard work out here. Scrambled seam. It's unusual for Chark Cullis. He normally loses the ball with a seam in a very good position. He was certainly there for his team in, in England in the heading. Oh, that's a good shot. That is a really good shot. That's well played. Around the wicket and he's been smashed back past him for four. That's uh, great control. Now, so I think that's probably sensible. 
at the moment to Fikuma has uh, got the upper hand 46 not out nine fours in that 46 next side Andre now yells no and that's going to go for four as well 50 up now for Tafikuma. It's a very good knock indeed. And that's three fours in a row. It's his seventh 50 in his 16th test. He really has played very well. He's gone on to make three hundreds also. This is his moment. What a good comeback from the left-hander. 50 off just 72 balls. The acceleration came just at the right time. He was cautious at the start, but Whenever the opportunity has come in the last half an hour or so, he's been bang on target, stroking the ball beautifully of the middle of the stick. Neat push through the onside, takes his helmet off, raises the bat. He has conquered the South Africans for the time being. This is a bit of a soft period for the South Africans here. Paul Adams and Andre Nell have gone for runs. They've not been able to exert that kind of pressure, that momentum that we saw courtesy in Tini and Tolak. A couple of occasions in his 30s. It's a good shot. Brings up the 100 as well, that single from Imran Fahad. This is an absolutely brilliant start. 100 against uh, good quality bowling attack and will give confidence to both Imran Fahad and Tafi Kumar. This is just about what the doctor's ordered. There's Paul Adams really good. Oh, and down the pitch, we could see something is about to happen. He lost all his confidence. Well, he had too much probably in a way, but he's just trying to take him on and try to hit it out of Lahore, and he's missed it completely. Well, he wasn't watching the ball. He was looking to hit the ball very hard came down to the track not quite getting to the pitch and then look at the head position there's nowhere he wasn't watching the ball had to pay the price and this is the wicket the South Africans they were working so hard for Imran Farad is walking back played well for his 41 and Pakistan losing their first wicket for 109 runs And that's a balance problem he's got, and he's going to have to work the most coordinated in the park. All six foot four of him. Haven't seen too much of him today, just five overs. No ball called. Another good shot. And it brings up the 150 for Pakistan. 150 for one now. Now, what a good platform this is, Amir. It is. And one thing these two batsmen there really have to realize that uh, the next man to come in is Yusuf Johanna. And after that, Quite a few players there making a comeback into the Pakistani team. Asim Kamal, in fact, making a test debut. But before he comes out to bat, the Pakistani batsmen, the top order batsmen, they really have to make sure they go beyond the first inning total of South Africa, and that is to 320. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the moment, the runs they are coming with alacrity. They don't have to take any risks. In five up. This is his third over in the spell. But he's got him. He's picked up a winger. Just persisting with that line and length. A big smile from Sean Pollock. He is the only bowler who's looked like getting a wicket today from South Africa's perspective. And he's finally done it. They've lost their second now, Pakistan. Well, uh, he really had to labor hard for his first wicket, Sean Pollock. And on that occasion, consistent line frustrated the batsman. Forced him to angle the face of the bat in order to pick up a single towards third man wasn't the right thing to do in uh, test match cricket but uh, he had to pay the price he's walking back after scoring 16 runs and Pakistan losing their second wicket for 151 runs using a full stroke Yusuf Johanna wasn't able uh, to middle the ball once again twice in this over shot nice and square not quite out of the middle of that but I think it's got enough legs to go all the way for four Hershey Gibbs is uh, scooting after it but a boundary shake of the head there from Andre Nell Yusuf Hunters in his first four yeah you're absolutely right 
hazing. The ball had too many legs. But Herschel Gibbs had only two, and that was the reason why the ball won the race. Good stroke from Yusuf Johanna on that occasion, placing the ball perfectly between uh, the cover and the points fieldsman. Didn't play that stroke with full flurry of the bat, just a mere push. Andre Nell has now conceded uh, seven fours, four fours actually, in one of his overs, which uh, put him on the back foot, that's for sure. Scuffing up things just uh, on the side of the pitch, not on the pitch with those uh, size 14 or 15 wheels he's got. Tidies up at the end, so that's the end of a comeback over from now. 158 for two. Late, maybe on the third day or fourth day. This track will provide certainly a lot more bite, a lot more turn. Out, caught behind by Boucher. Nell strikes, and that's a big wicket for South Africa. As twice Nels found the outside edge of Yusuf Johanna's bat, this time it carried. Well, he gets plenty of runs by playing this shot, mostly in wonders, but this is test match cricket. And this is good bowling by Andre Nell. He delivered on that line, on that length, and uh, Yusuf Johanna attempted once again to guide the ball. And he guided it, but in the hands of the keeper. Nell and company overjoyed. This is a huge wicket. The most experienced Pakistani batsman has been snapped. Gone for eight. Johanna looked rusty. 160 for three. Asim Kamal. Big moment for him. First time he's walked out there for Pakistan. The senior team, whether it be one day's tests, making his debut for his nation. This is why he's there. It's good bowling. It's not good batting, I have to add. He looked like he was running it down to third man, as Amish Raja was saying. He plays this shot well in one-day cricket. Nice catch by Boucher. Pretty big moment for him, too. Oh, that might be out. That might just be out. Ooh. All I can think is that it's pitched outside leg stump. That's all I can think of. Well, replay will give us uh, a better view of what happened out there, and Grinnell on that leg stump. And, uh, well, very close, but umpire thought that would have gone on to miss the stumps. And where was this pitch? Now, that was another thing that would have been uh, going in the mind of the umpire out there but it was very very close thing could have easily gone in favor of the ball on uh, another day well I can't I, I really can't I tell you what's gone through the mind of umpire here is that now Bowls at a bit of an angle. It doesn't exactly get. I think that's pitch middle and leg, and hit in middle. I, ju I just think it's stone dead. We can't quite tell. We're not absolutely certain on where the ball pitched, but it looked full enough to have been able to pitch on. Well, good. Luck.
That should be turn. Let's take a chance. Wouldn't have been a nice way to start this bit. Let's take a three. Away for four. That takes him to 99. Very clear. 99 foot. Any batsman in the world will get there. Beautiful score, that was. Good effect. And navigation number nine, Jimmy, is back. Looking to fast. And coffee, come on. Spot that very early. Got into a nice position and then. Release of the back was excellent. Pick up the boundary for his effort. There it is. It's fourth test number. It is 16th match, his second successive test century against South Africa. Oh, he's 135 in Cape Town. Well played. He just played in South Africa, that's for sure. He scored plenty of runs in three test matches, he's featured in the Pakistan against South Africa. Picking up 700. He has been playing straight in innings. Rafiqa, he was required to concentrate very hard and provide Pakistan team with a solid platform. And that's what he did. And that's a personal landmark for him. It's very important for Rafiqa that he must carry on. He's got a personal landmark, but he, his team requires him at the place for a longer period of time. Just a simple nudge and a raise of the bat. And that's his 100. Simple. Now it's a good point that you make those uh, innings a little lower yet. He's, he's going out, regroup, enjoy the moment, start again. It's going to be down to him to guide Pakistan to a substantial lead, which is obviously what they're looking to do. And with a reasonable, reasonably long tail on the Pakistan side, it's still up to the top order to make sure that they achieve that. I've got to have a concentrated very hard. Arsenal Kamal making his debut, he's been there, and has faced 23 deliveries. Hello. Has looked comfortable. Third over gone, after tea, Pakistan 187 for three. Hello. There's a slight sort of raised hand, apologies from Smith with a high ball. You can make a ruling in, in the longer version of the game, it's something to do with the word fast, I think he's in there somewhere. It's whether it should be, you know, there's no ball or a threatening delivery. They show that club a warning for a sort of shoulder high. What being as a word they use, isn't it, really? Uh, to voucher early on in the season yesterday. I think you have to be quicker than Smith's different one. Warnings. This keeper has more than badly at all. He's playing this left over last delivery, and he's only given away five runs, along with Maiden. Certainly pretty pressure. Shot delivery. And he'll have the last five in the team for a lot of three wickets. Yeah. So we look at the front side. Oh, it's a loose ball from Paul Adams, and that's a wide left to Brogan Shaw. He just counts on that one. And he's still away, he's a four-runs in his own. He's taking that one, he's going to get back on South Africa now. He needs to see how much this ball will be spinning. And plenty of time to walk back in, that one's solid. Four delivery. There's no one controlling the wicket, and so easy runs for the Everton. So look at uh, one side of that uh, red chair that's uh, Drew Shorty, which is uh, one of the good force uh, in Australia. And players, so it's not quite a man to be trusted with uh, buying which ones they want to use before the game. They get out of a box of balls, and they can uh, pick a few out. The last ball of the Swiss eighth. Three up at 223. He's got it, he has a full-hour strike. He has a very good catch in the middle of the ball, something from the trigger. He has quite a good catch in the middle of the ball, so now he's gone right back to the middle of the ball. The full hour is finally picked up the wicket. Got a good catch, very second. Well, he played a good number, but not a great way to get out because the new ball is due any moment now. Okay, but he thought it was uh, required there by Pakistan. New shot, died in the big shot. Open against Hope with Paul Adams with traffic. He's got it in the middle of his pass, so Rafi Komar has fixed it. 1-1-1, he got 223 for 4. 223 for 4, the deficit now 97, the last man that uh, was dismissed was Stephen Komar, who uh, won't find a level score. Test 100 is second against Africa, and a show of mark. He was a new man, of course, so Stephen Komar received a defeat back. In the first one, they had a 90-year-old ball, he scored 82 of 41 deliveries. And the average doesn't take any score at all. His talents, which is over 11. He's got his fourth game, high score 21, of course, so he's got his fingers in the first innings, falling 4 wickets. The third day, so he's been quite busy with his pick of the plate. Five and it's by all the way to six. It's by the top edge, but he's got a lot better than Paul was uh, in the slow motion. Sean Pollock, the position back and shot with the top edge, but it was a decent enough shot, decent connection, went all the way, sailed over the ground below. But uh, quite nicely outside the line of that ball. He gets a very clear, very hard shot, Pollock was expecting it to be caught, not to be. A silly bit of news. It was a great hit, but it came off the bat and that went away for six. That's gone next side, and it's gone fine, so the judges on. But it's a different up, they'll have come back for two, so that's a very good match for Pakistan. 13 runs coming from, and 83 gone, 240 for four. That's a beautiful strike. Minimum movement, maximum timing.
two and a half thousand runs almost, 1550s, three centuries to his name, and that's why he's there. Kept a little bit low, but uh, played down the wrong line, didn't he? Played inside the spin of the ball, and it was always too full to play back to. Boucher delighted, as is Adams, bowled it. Got squared on, didn't he? wasn't looking to play the ball on the front foot and that's why he was picked up oh, end of a successful over from Paul Adams Pakistan 322 for 5 cries of catch it but he's hit that beautifully that has gone for another boundary that's a very good shot indeed he's been so patient as Kamal he's impressed a lot of people here today Read the spin well from Paul Adams. He has been doing that consistently now. He's got this uh, good ability to get to the pitch very quickly. When you get there, then it becomes immaterial whether the ball is spinning away or coming back at you because you've covered the spin. Midwicket was brought in and he knew exactly where to put it over Midwicket's head. We'll be unlucky to get one spinning away. I don't think we've seen one of those from Paul Adams in the uh, 31 overs and four balls he's bowled. Everything's coming back in towards the left-hander. Oh, 89.3 k's per hour. You heard Dean Jones say before that uh, Shane Warne tries to get between 75 and 80 k's per hour. Certainly bowling far too quickly now, Adams. He's got three wickets though. The one, uh, the last delivery to get rid of Shoaib Malik was a good one. And that's uh, sliding down the leg side to test Mark Boucher again. He does well. 335 for five. So at lunch on day three, Pakistan will be happy with that. 346 for five. 128 overs South Africa spent in the field. Tofu Kamal was outstanding. Also, the debutant Kamal, not out 86 at the moment. Just 14 away for a century on debut. And if you look at the South African bowling figures, well, there were six bowlers used. They've uh, swapped it around a bit. Even uh, Graham Smith last night had eight overs, but didn't pick up a wicket. But Paul Adams did a good job today. With a spell of uh, 12 overs, four maidens, one for 25. He's picked up three overall in a wicket piece to Sean Pollock and also Andre Nell. And the situation at the moment, and South Africa winning the toss. 320 for nine. Boucher the top scorer. And Pakistan now 346 for five. And they lead by 26 runs. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll join the action for the second session. This could be us. Yeah! Yes, that must be taken. He's hit it as flat as a tack. Alpala Car Financing. Session. Let's see whether this can uh, go South Africa's way. Pakistan lead by 26. We can get that lead stretched to 100 mark. I think South Africa... Get away from 100. Gone again. It beats Makai and Tini. Will he be able to stop it? He moves on to 98. Two easy balls. Paul Adams would be absolutely disgusted with this. And so will Graham Smithy. South Africa wanting to put pressure on the young player here. Too easy full toss and both times he has uh, been able to put it away. Well you might as well bowl him another full toss and give him 100 here because this is just poor bowling. Here he is, 98 knots. Wonder if you get another full toss. That's gone. Will he get to? He's running hard. Goes on to 99. Well, they're all out there to congratulate him in anticipation. They wait for that magical hit, magical run that will give him his under. He's already got a fan falling here. Isn't it fantastic the team spirit of the Pakistanis all out on the balcony waiting to congratulate is in Kamal, that's fantastic, really is. Big one, gets him on strike again. Oh, what a wonderful feeling this ball will be feeling. There's been two batsmen who have got out on 99 on their test debuts. Chipperfield and Christiani, 99 on debut. But anyway, here he goes, will he be able to work a one somewhere? All oh, the field's coming up to stop the one. 
Here we go. There's it round the corner. He looks for a run, not there. Moin Khan is itching to get to the other end. He'll have to wait. 362 for five. Unfortunate can you get played on this is a tragedy South Africans are all picked up but spare a thought for us in Kamal so clear so near yet so far well he's just tried to run this ball down the third man and it held its line he got an inside edge and straight on the stumps just have a look at it, it was wide enough was it a bit too close no footwork and oh he oh he rue that shot forever it'll be in the back of his mind for the day he dies unfortunately but more importantly he's played well on his debut it's been a fantastic knock for him 99 and 11 boundaries and a six of 246 deliveries a brilliant effort he'll be dis very disappointed he's played brilliantly well played son bad luck there he is, all the players are still there and shake of the hand and be so disappointed, he really will. Oh, he'll be absolutely gut wrenched. It's just one of the saddest things for him. He really deserved a hundred, he really did. And now they've got the six wicket now, Pakistan, 363 for six with Shoah Akhtar coming to the crease. It's a sad stat. It becomes the ninth Pakistani to, to be dismissed for 99 in a test match. The first Pakistani to be dismissed on a test match debut. 28 matches for Shweb, 245. He can uh, bat a bit. We know that he can hit the ball hard in one day cricket. But what a sad end. Would have been a fairy tale ending had he got a run. Got out for 99. Well, those bales do come off inside edge onto that onto the uh, the stump camera there there it is there inside edge look out oopsie awful sound those bales do come off Torfik might have had a bit of luck there when he was on 17 he went on to make 100 but Andre now worked very hard today I'll be most impressed with his effort he's got his second wicket really has bowled well he's pretty happy too they got a shot like there. Interesting. Okay, Vakta will not be drawn into a verbal contest. He's already paid the price. I'm quite surprised he's come out to bat because I honestly think, technically, Mohamed Sami's a better player as a, as a batsman. I think it's time give the kid a little bit more responsibility and bat him at number seven. Not to forget Mushtaq Ahmed who's uh, got a couple of 50s in Test Match cricket at least. For now it's going to be Amir Swail and with him Robin Jackman. Thanks very much Ramiz. Oh! Stamped! By quite a long way. So show back to looking to Slog Paul out of his back over his head, missed it by plenty and was well out of his crease when Boucher took the bails off. It was just a matter of time before Schwebachter attempted that stroke. Doesn't like to hang about Schwebachter. He was looking to go after the left arm spinner and he has picked up his fourth wicket in this innings. And Schwebachter only contributing one run. Pakistan 366 for seven. Well, South Africa would be very pleased. Two quick wickets after the luncheon break. Mohamed Sami, I quite uh, expected him to come in before Shoaib Akhtar because I think technically he's probably a better player. Whereas um, Shoaib Akhtar is always looking to get after it, as you'll see by this replay. But then that might have been part of the plan. Go and get some quick runs. Oh! 
And sure enough, there's a waste captain as well. Well, there you go then. <laughs> well out. Good work from Boucher. Fourth wicket for Adams. Really good opportunity for Adams to finish with uh, five or six here. Oh, yes, yes. He's bowling. There's his fifth. Five in an innings is a similar milestone to a hundred. One man's just missed out and the other one's cashed in. Well, we have seen two inside edges onto the stump after lunch and that tells you the story the wicket is losing the pace. Once again, a quickish delivery, forcing the batsman on the back foot, squaring mark, only managing an inside edge. Muhammad Sami is picked up by Paul Adams in a span of two deliveries. Jack Ahmed, no mug with the bat. Two fifties in Test cricket. Mind the average. The two fifties tells you that uh, he's capable of hanging around. Best, in fact, 59 against South Africa. And this is why he's there. Very badly angled bat, that. Oh, I Sami. I just wonder, you know, anyone who's been watching Adams throughout this innings, oh. every ball is bowls turned away. If it's turned, it's turned away from the batsman. And uh, one wonders whether Mohamed Shami has been watching him bowl, because he played... That's a good shot. A very good shot. Three seventy nine for eight. It's gone nice and fine. A big throw down over. Now will he get there? No, he won't. So it's gone for a boundary. Bailey will boundary that one. Takes the lead to just under 70. So bang on 70 it is. Very good shot. He let the ball come on there. Just watch the way he opens the blade up. Back and across and runs it down there. Good batting. Really good batting there. From Mohan Khan. He's, he's second boundary. He's also got a six. Good effort by Andre now. Played well, 35 uh, not out. Going back to uh, Shoah Bakhtar, he's going to be steaming in. He is uh, still livid that uh, he's going to be missing a test match in two one-dayers. Obviously that's uh, up for appeal, so it's going to be fascinating cricket this afternoon here in Lahore. Local time now about uh, nine minutes to two here in Lahore. My advice anywhere, you might be watching. Ah! Oh, that's not a bad shot, I think that's out. Yes it is. So Paul Backed up six. Well done, Paul Adams. What a good performance that is. He really has uh, been terrific today. And uh, Mohan Khan is the man that departs. High fives around for Paul Adams. Don't think he's happy with that decision. More importantly, I don't think he's too happy with the running between the wickets, the previous ball. It seemed to me to go straight on. The, the top spinner for an Adams. Let's have a look at it here. Pitch that side, that's fine. Goes straight on. That's out to me. Hits him in line. Yep, that's dead. He, unless he got a bit of bat on it, and Neil Mallander gives him his last rights. So, Adams picks up his sixth wicket. The second time he's done that in his career. Mal Khan's gone for 37. Pakistan, 401 for nine. Danish Canary, number 11 for Pakistan. Average of uh, just over seven and a half. Best of 15 against Australia and shows you not so long ago he is going to be a threat that's for sure with the ball in his hand he's got lots of lots of variation but uh, Moen Khan certainly wasn't happy he stood around for a bit when he was given yeah I just wonder whether or not there was a bit of bat there I just feel that there might have been a bit of bat for me here we go here let's go forward and he did yeah it's just a slight inside edge onto the pad just right away right from the straight away from the vision I thought normal vision it might have been out, but it's a faint inside edge for me. Let's have a look here. Marwan's response. He cannot believe it. No, that's fair enough. That's OK. No problem. Rise of catch, and it should be out. Graham Smith is the man down there when Paul Adams has now got his best for. Terrific stuff from Paul Adams. He's got seven for 128. 
Betting his previous best at 6 for 55 against India. Congratulations, Paul Adams. Outstanding stuff from him after a poor day yesterday, but he's bounced back beautifully today. Well, there's lots of talk around the rooms and etc. that are a bit disappointed with his, his performance yesterday, but today he's bounced back. Well done, Paul Adams. He showed some good heart today, even though there's a lot of improvement to do. He's got seven wickets in Spinner's Paradise in Lahore. And there it is. He just tried to slog it over the top. Sliced it up in the air. And the skipper gets underneath it. Just watches it straight in. Beautifully watched there. And bang, they're all out. Fantastic effort. Seven for 128 of 45 overs. And there goes Danish Canary. The second batsman to get a duck today. After 148 overs. So a very good effort by South Africa to bounce back the way they did. So Pakistan all out eventually for just over the 400 mark, 401, but South Africa spent a lot of time in the field, 148 overs, and the stars for Pakistan, Tufik, 111, and also Kamal, 99, just missing out by one on a century on debut. If you look at the South African bowlers, well, we just can't go any further than Paul Adams, 45 overs, 11 maidens, 7 for 128, had a tough day yesterday, but he was outstanding today, 22 overs, 8 maidens, 5 for 58 his return today, and that is a career best for Paul Adams. And if you look at the situation of the game at the moment, South Africa in their first innings, 320 for 9, and Pakistan now 401. Pakistan lead by 81 runs, and we've got plenty of test match. New ball, then it'll become that much more difficult for the middle order to tackle the spin, because the spinners will come on to bowl with an advantage. They conserve wickets, see off this new burst from Shweb Akhtar and company, then will relieve the nerves in the dressing room. The umpires, of course, would have changed ends now that they've done an innings, done the first innings. Well, he's had a bit of luck here. That was on him much too quickly. He's got a top edge and it's flown over the keeper for the full quota. Goodness gracious me. A little comment from his skipper, a little comment from Herschel Gibbs. Oh, far too quick. Very good bouncer from Shwe Bakta. That went at 151 kilometers per hour. That was quick. And many a miles after that edge from Herschel Gibbs, who just sailed over. Edge and oh, drops. It's been grasped by Moin Khan now. That was straightforward. Unbelievable. A fantastic delivery. It's really squared Gibbs up. Watch how Gibbs plays this. Nice little outside edge. And just gone down. Would you, would you believe it? Oh dear. You know, as a seam bowler on a flat pitch, when that happens, Oh. Can't find the words. Morgan Moen Khan. Look, he's just gone. Yay, got it. Oh my goodness me. Speed of 90.9 miles per hour. Cullis in 2001 and Herschel Gibbs in 2001. Herschel and uh, and Jark getting a thousand runs each in the calendar year. South Africa must have had a fairly good batting year in 2001, one would imagine. You throw Kirsten in there somewhere, you would have got a few. Good stroke, excellent shot. Never any doubt as to where that was going to finish. 34 for no wicket. He wasn't looking to hit the ball very hard. And that's what you're required to do as a batsman, especially opening batsman when you're looking to hit the ball straight down the track. Just a simple push, using the pace on the ball. And picking up his first boundary. 
authoritative stroke from uh, the captain that boundary takes him uh, to double figures Off has come a little bit straighter now. One slip's been released. Right there, no. Corner one. Forty six the deficit now. were in operation in the first innings on the first day of this match by the 16th over won't be much difference uh, in this innings either there are only two seamers in the Pakistan team so they bowled their burst of six or seven his debut it's always the bloke making his debut gets the dangerous job with the helmet and everything and but what a good bit of fielding this was well he has fielded well throughout the test match Asim Kamal he simply saved a lot of runs for his team and he's been appreciated by the fast bowler Shweb Akhtar you fielded there you no know, as a youngster when you were making your te test match debut you got to stand there to get a bit of experience uh, of international cricket and then uh, you get elevated you move to uh, slip when you have the experience of playing few uh, test matches ah! 56 k's from mid off to fine leg and that's his uh, main area but who's the god This is the fellow they're worshipping at the moment. No ball. No ball called. Graham Smith up. Oh, 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 he's got him. He's got him with pace and bounce. South African captain's on his way. Angle was created on that occasion by Shrey Bakhtar. Moved the ball away from the left-handed batsman. He was beaten by the pace and the movement. And the ball taking the edge rather than the batsman edging it to the slip fieldsman. Good catch by Tofikoma and hard work has been rewarded. Shweb Akhtar, you're brilliant. First wicket gone, South Africa 43 for one. Could be us. Yeah. Turn that away nicely. That's good timing. It's partly the pace of Shoaib Akhtar that's made the ball race away for four, but it's beautifully played. Well, I think he was in a position very early. Have a look. Shuffled across and then ill-directed delivery. All Boyd Adipna had to do was hit the ball, and that's what he did. He's off the mark with a convincing stroke. routine his back foot goes back to start with and across towards middle and off and the front foot gets balanced with a very short step if he has to play ball he goes forward from there if he has to play back he just rocks back on the back foot that's already in position now there's a man coming catching just behind the square pretty deep
good over. That was 160. 47 for one. It's delivery of Mohammed Sami spell. A lovely shot from Herschel Gibbs. That's uh, going to run away. That is a very good shot indeed. 16 gone. 62 for one. Into the spinners in, in, in the sun continent. Oh, they're annoying and they catch everything. Oh, nice shot for loose ball and he's jumped all over it and that's his first 50 in his 51st test and the first 50 against Pakistan. Well played. Well, Hershey Gibbs, who was a bit lucky to start with, a few days could have gone anywhere. Then outer edges, he was dropped by Moon Khan and the ball kissing the off stump. But he has forgotten about it and now he has started to middle the ball. That's a long time. Could have played there anywhere but decided to play on the offside. Hit the ball to the boundary line. That was the sixth boundary for him and that got his fifth. The first one in the series for him. Played in a good field place here. Even with the lights on, well played. And now he's really looking hard at the umpire. And Neil Mallander looks like he's walking over to Daryl Hare to have a little bit of a word here. And they're just having a little talk here. And they haven't got the light meters out yet. That was the amount of time off the field last night. That's, uh, well, he's got his man in the end. Not a great shot from De Pinard, has to be said. This is the fastest bowler in the world, and it's well wide of off stump. Difficult to pull, perhaps easier to cut. This is a well-crafted dismissal by Shweb after he has been bowling him the link delivery. The Yorkers and certainly slipped this very, very fast bouncer. Gordon De Pinard was in no position. It was well directed on... Uh, that off stump, Yusuf Johanna has an easy catch. Important breakthrough. This is what Pakistanis were hoping to get an early wicket. Shwebakta obviously delighted, delirious with the effort. Wonderfully bowled. Gone for 27 ball to Dipana, 104 for 2 South Africa. Jack Kallis playing his 70th test match, average of 49. Low strike rate, 39.8, which uh, I think he's aware of and trying to do something about. Wide there, that's wide of off stump. Wonder whether the cut shot, a better shot to play. Difficult to pull a fast bowler from it that wide. High up on the bat and a very simple chance to hit on. So finally, the big fast bowler gets it. Brilliant stuff from Shweb Akhtar. It was a quick ball, quick bouncer. Boy, the Dipana failed to get it under control. Now, we've got a short leg and a short cover. I wouldn't call it a silly mid-off. You see two men... delivery and that's out. Shabakta is on fire. That was an absolute beauty from Shabakta. We saw a great celebration from him when he got to uh, put to dip and up. And maybe then Herschel Gibbs is sticking around and having a look at his arm as well. So maybe Gibbs thinks that uh, finally his luck has run out. Well let's have a look where it hit him. Unbelievable delivery, fast and furious. Let's see the bounce. Did it take, or did it take a bit of the glove? It's hit him in the shoulder. Hit him in the shoulder. Got no hassles with that. And it's ballooned to Tall Steve taking another catch. But the major point for me is it did it. Here's the response by Shoaib. Did it take a little bit of the glove on the way through? But he's been given out. 
Unbelievable spell. So Herschel Gibbs goes. Very well compiled 59. South Africa in a real weird position now. 108 for three. So to come for South Africa now is Gary Kirsten, Mark Boucher, Sean Pollock, and then the bowlers, Adams and Tini and Nell. I don't think we'll see Kirsten come in next. Probably after Sean Pollock, I would guess, but uh, we'll try and get a shot of uh, the change room shortly to see if he is getting prepared, if he's got his whites on. Callus. No ball. No ball called by umpire Neil Mallander. Pakistan have done a great job. going to run away for four. We'll wait for confirmation to see if there was any bat. I don't think there was. No, leg by as it was. And the reverse swing just sliding leg side again for the second ball in a row. There's a huge crunch from Shreb after. Bend his back. That ball went at over 95 miles per hour. Just kissing the pad and avoiding the dive off. Shreb <laughs> catch it. There was a noise. And up goes the finger. Jacques Callas is uh, not happy at all, not happy at all, Jacques Callas, I think he's been done for the second time in this test match. Charbuckdale struck again, he's picked up his fourth, and Callas is taking a long, long time to walk off the park. Well, decision is a separate matter, but what great bowling from Charbuckdale. A couple of deliveries that swung in, left the batsman, it just says his length once again, it was a quick ball. And it hit the shoulder, missed the bat, hit the shoulder. Moin Khan took the catch, strong appeal. Shwai Bakhtar thought that he had nicked it. And Pa Delver also favoured him. Unlucky. Jack Callis gone for 18, 149 for four. Kirsten. Oh, what a great delivery first up to Gary Kirsten. Now he would have been thinking about the short ball, there's no doubt about that. It's 155 k's per hour. Kirsten would have been expecting a short one after the, he the fearful blow he got in the first innings and he dug it out, terrific bowling. This is excellent stuff, the field was stationed for the short one. There you see Silly Madoff short leg in place and certainly oh, yeah. because of the quality of the bowling also around the bat throughout the entire morning. dismissal, leg stump has been knocked out of the ground, Danish Canaria starts a Shobakta style celebration, he's just grabbed Shobakta as uh, he's gone down there as well, so that is a very important wicket, that is a real big wicket for Pakistan, Neil McKenzie's gone. Well what a poor shot this is, a wicket has gone down, that can happen to you when you preempt a shot. Two wickets have gone down in just six deliveries. Anish Kaneria is absolutely delirious. He is happy. Mackenzie gone for 14. South Africa now in trouble. 149 for five. Lots of noise now from Pakistan. It was in 1997, 98 when the Pakistani team was touring South Africa. In the first test match which was played at Johannesburg, uh, they had the South Africans Eight wicket down for 166 runs and then Mark Boucher featuring in a big partnership with Pat Simcox and that partnership was of 195 runs. In the air and he's hit it pretty well into the gap. It's gone for four. Gutsy play Mark Boucher but a credit to you. They've been proactive. They will not back off the South Africans. This two experienced pair. Fantastic shot. A lot of risk element in this one. But the placement was good. Bisecting to two fieldsmen at long leg and also at uh, square leg. No chance for them to stop that one. Now once again, Mark Boucher is at the crease and he's got the ability to pick up some important runs like he did in the last innings. ICC cameras supplied by the ICC. Oh, great shot. Great shot from Gary Kirsten off his toes. It's going away to the boundary. Oh, that's a fantastic shot. So it's his first boundary. Fighting back the South Africans. Well, stamping his authority, Gary Kirsten on that occasion. The ball arriving in the right area for the left-handed batsman. And he made sure that he middles that one and plays that ball away from the fields when Danish Shwe Malik at mid-on. 
and this will give a lot of confidence to Gary Kirsten who's been struggling oh. Oh, it's just got wide of that leg Gally made his mind up anything that's short he's going to go for it 11 off the over 171 for 5 and looks like it will be lunch here so what an absorbing day's cricket, test cricket we've had here today. It's been a fantastic day, it really has. Both teams are just trying to sort themselves out here. So a great session from Pakistan, helped by a couple of doubtful decisions as well, it must be said, but picking up uh, four wickets and also just... Sorry for him, don't you? 99. Oh. He would not have slept a wink last night thinking about where could I find that extra one run. That's put away brilliantly. Good pull shot from Gary Kirsten. 179 for five. Catch it is a shot. Well, I thought that there was a little bit of edge. Now Pakistan want Gary Kirsten to play the sweep shot. Let's have a look. Oh, it did. I think it got the top edge. He knows it was in the air. Oh, they should have got that, Pakistan. Imran Fahad should have got it. And they let him off with an easy one, looking for two. Well, I can't believe that the ball stayed so long in the air, and yet the bat pad feels... It's out, though. Don't worry about that. They've got the wicket. They've worked very hard at Danish Canaria. This kid, he's showing Pakistan on how to win this match here in Lahore. This is absolutely great stuff. He's had a long ball. He's not wilted under pressure. He's got his concentration going. And this one was a great ball. The top spinner. Balloon in the air and this time Imran Farid makes no mistake with it. Mark Bowser started to walk away the moment he hit that one. So this is a glorious breakthrough. Gone for 15, 192 for 6. Oh! It's a faster one, quicker one. Ball at 96.2 kilometers per hour. But... That's nicely played. There is a chase uh, from uh, Mushtaq Ahmed who's not been uh, involved as far as the bowling is concerned and that stroke, that four runs brought 200 for South Africa and as a bowler if you know that you're a premier bowler and that's uh, Shoei Bakhtar who's been injured because of uh, hamstring you know it actually develops a lot of uh, pressure on the other bowlers but what Danish Canaria has done he hasn't faltered to the pressure what he has done is taken the responsibility has provided the Pakistani team with an important breakthrough. Mark Boucher is a very dangerous player. Silly point is very, very tight in there on the offside. To well played. That's a very good shot. That was a typical Kirsten shot. His timing and his placement, absolutely superb. Well, that's where the Pakistani captain has to be very careful. Like we suggested that these two players, they're not going to hang about. They'll be looking for some quick runs. A plus and a poor delivery from Shweb Malik wasn't that short. But how well Gary Kirsten played that one. Using the depth of the crease, going right back. Creating a bit of room for himself to play that stroke. Picking up his fourth boundary. Good cricket. Now one shot that uh, Gary likes playing, which uh, we probably won't see him play in this sort of situation, is where he just uh, steps across the crease and uh, comes down the line for around about six inches outside the off stump to the spinners and uh, launches over mid on. We're more than likely to just be waiting for those uh, boost delivery short and wide that he can get away with assistance uh, from Mohamed Sami there for a single. That's a rarity. He's a brilliant fieldsman, Mohammed Sami. Misfielding on that occasion. The first time I've seen that Mohammed Sami misfielding. Good ball round trigger. Mohammed Sami. Suffering from fever. He 
knows the importance of this game. Playing very hard for his team, Mohammed Sami. Head of the over from Shweb Malik, South Africa, 176. Four wickets in hand for South Africa. They need a bit of a lift actually, South Africa do. And it's Danish Canary to continue. So to come now for South Africa, there's uh, not a great deal of batting. Paul Adams, no doubt to uh, have the pads on. Here we do in next, then uh, Mackay and Tini, and then Andre Nell. Very good shot. That is a terrific shot. Good control again from Gary Kirsten. Gee, these runs are valuable. That lead now is 130. A typical left-handed stroke against the leg spinner who is waiting for the ball to arrive in the right area. Just outside the off stump. He executed a perfect stroke. Catching that one away from the off stump. At the arm length. Getting the ball right out of the middle of the bat. No chance for Mohammed Sami. A deep square leg to stop that one down the track it's a clean hit it's a glorious six what a hit brilliant shot by Sean Pollock got to the pitch very very quickly and easily handsome stroke he's a very good golfer Sean Pollock see why that follow through hit it very high and certainly far enough Beautiful stroke. Good use of the feet, good balance. Head down on impact. Still in the middle. And the other, with 75, is with him. Kirsten and Pollock. That's up in the air though. Kirsten is gone. That is a huge wicket for Pakistan. Looking to take it to them. Kirsten miscues and the most experienced of the South Africans leaves the field. Now this is a tremendous catch, a pressure catch. Yusuf Yana had to wait an eternity to uh, handle that one. It went in the air, concentrated well and made sure that he got it right beside his chin. Gary Kirsten, rush of blood, gone for 46, 237 for 7. for Adams wonderful bowling from a wonderful leg spinner he really has impressed me excellent this is tremendous bowling Danesh Kaneria bowled the flipper the floater and was on target Paul Adams was late in uh, negotiating that one he took a pace and yes hit his back leg and that would have gone on to hit the stumps for sure straightforward decision by the umpire an easy one Great start from the league spinner. He's picked up four now. Four for 46. Paul Adams gone for not. 238 for eight. Mushtaq Ahmed. We finally see uh, Mushtaq Ahmed coming on to bowl. Just seven overs, none for 17. All the seven overs were bowled yesterday. As in bowl today. It'll be interesting to see what uh, policy Pollock follows here. Mushtaq's got two people catching, a slip and a silly point. Everyone on the leg side's on the boundary. I don't think Pollock can afford to take singles, unfortunately, for him. I think he's got to look at twos and boundaries. Oh, he, well, he's just proved it totally wrong there. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, mate. I'll have a word with you later. He, part of his... Uh, protection would be to get that left foot as far down the pitch as you can makes it very difficult for an umpire to give him out lbw this is the wrong one he had flighted it ball would have gone on to hit the stumps but there was enough doubt because that front foot was stretched stretched just a wee bit outside that off stump cleaned him up with a great run there. I guess that is why Sean Pollock shouldn't have taken that single. 
Mustard Ahmed lured him into drive that one through the offside and Andre Nell took the bait wickets are shattered lovely flight there you see that long one coming from the back of the palm spun enough to go through between that and that classic dismissal Andre now bags a pair 241 for nine. Oh, clean and wow, what great bowling. It was the wrong one, a better one than Mushtaq Ahmed. His fifth five wicket haul in his 13th test match. Two classic deliveries, one by Mushtaq, the other by Danish Canaria, and that means that the South Africans are all out. And the lead is 160, so Pakistan will require. 161 to win this now this is a top quality ball this is what's called cleaning up the tail although you wouldn't call Pollock part of the tail tremendous bowling by this young man he's bowled the whole day virtually and once again the top spinner through the gate South Africa have lost their last four wickets for four runs in 13 deliveries well bowled Pakistan You have bowled yourselves into a position where you need 161 to win. He's got the ball. He won't let it out of his hand. He hasn't all day, and he's not going to now. Danish Kaneria, a rising star in world cricket. So all out for 241 South Africa. They'll be very disappointed with the tail of that innings. Lost their last four wickets for four runs in 13 balls. So that'll be a major concern for South Africa. Normally their tail is very good, but all out for 241. And if we look at the Pakistan bowling figures, well, Danish Canaria was absolutely outstanding. 28 and a half overs, eight maidens, five for 46. And let's not forget also Shah Bhatta right at the top. 14 and a half, two maidens, four for 36, of course. So he was hamstring problem which is going to keep him out of the game for a couple of weeks and there's a look back at uh, what's happened so far in this test match South Africa's total in the first innings after winning the toss 320 for nine Pakistan went ahead by 81 runs after the first dig South Africa disappointed I'm sure with that 241 and Pakistan now need 161 runs to win good leave what really goes down that line outside off stump and if it does have the tendency to nick them in the air Oh, can you believe it? Can you believe it? Just taking the man away from there, and it's gone away for four. Well, that's a fortune. Well, went in the air, that one. He's really flashing hard on that one. Wow. That <laughs> occurs for the captain, isn't it? They're trying to get these runs tonight. straight on that but uh, he's going to take that four valuable boundary at the moment goes past the 50 mark of 52 for no loss Gee, that's a very good shot that is uh, running away towards the fence and it's going to go for four wow that's uh, very well played from uh, Tafuku Mark slightly over pitched and just dispatched the coverage for a boundary provided the left hander with a lot of width and even though the South Africans had a sweeper there, missed it. That's 
bit up. That's the length. Now one thing that's that's in the air for a while, but it's running away very, very briskly. That's uh, another good shot. Judd Callis got excited for a brief moment, but uh, now it's gone for the boundary. He's got his own style, his own trademark. And I heard when he plays this shot, very elegant, wristy, and uh, well, he's found the gap. More frustration for Jack Callis. Oh! Close, very close, but he has uh, got it away. Four. Four more. They are playing absolutely beautifully. They really are. Anything loose, that sort of stump. Imran Fahad particularly is just jumping on anything square and then she takes boundary. Played particularly well off the back foot. This, this actual shot allows the ball to get alongside him. You never see his hands come at the ball. Plays it so late, plays it under his eyes. And then pick up the single. Well done. Oh. That's squeezed away for four more. I don't know whether that was angled down there, Dino, you know, or whether that was an outside edge. I think the latter. Well, the last rights have been served up here. One runs required. Here it is. An edel outside edge. Went hard with it. Squared him up. Oh, got to win the game. Aren't you supposed to have catches somewhere, or what are you supposed to do? Do here, Rob. I know it's very easy to sit up here and it's frustrating. It's a hard pitch to bowl on. But there's only part of the wicket keeper. There's only one catcher. Yeah, I agree. And in, in as much as how how else is this field going to get run out? Hello. Leading edge. Take the single. Hits the stumps. And uh, yeah, not too late yet, but oh. nicely played. Good adjustment from Tufik, and he's run that away for four beautifully. He plays this shot so well, he really does. The trick, the solution to it is, he, he, he waits for the ball to come on. He really watches the ball and doesn't go hard and plays it so late and opens the blade up. Gone, four. There's no way, no poly. I don't know why his hands were up near his waist then, but in a bit lower first slip. Well, technically there's 12 overs to go. Then Pakistan could enforce an extra half hour, but the major problem is Pakistan, why not keep going? Wow. Outside edge, genuine outside edge, but hard at it. Would have taken some catching for sure. But that's precisely why I feel that round it to the left handers isn't such a bad idea. Across him, as he turned, past Pollock in a flash. The major concern I've got is Pollock's hands. Why is his hand so high? He's really standing up at the time. Didn't quite capture it there, but he's really standing up. Look where Pollock is now. His hands are so high. Big big nick, and he's almost alligator hands together. I couldn't work that out. Not great technique for me. The South Africans were buoyant because they'd had such a good day yesterday. Now they won't be bothered that he's uh, all standing up there to celebrate Tofik's second 50 of the match. Well played, young man, well played, well played indeed. His seventh 50 in his 16th test match to go along with four centuries. Second in his fifth test match.